The year is 2024. And over the last few years, espresso shots that were once deemed undrinkable are now considered the pinnacle of innovation. I mean, the turbo shot raised a lot of eyebrows early on, but I'm now a turbo evangelist, so the proof, as we've since learned, is in the cup. And truly, we haven't really done any of these espresso anatomy videos trying out new shot styles in quite some time, so when a comment popped up on a video of a turbo shot saying, wait until you try soup, which they described as a lower pressure turbo shot aiming for a max pressure of 1 to 2 bar, a 15 second shot time, and a brew ratio of 1 to 3, I said, challenge accepted. So from there, I sort of went on a bit of an information hunt looking for more about this shot style, but unfortunately that was a bit of a bust, because I could only find one short vertical video with about 100 views that used quotes around the word soup, so I'm not sure, but I don't think it's their idea but I could be wrong. Yet regardless, my curiosity was already peaked and the show must go on. So today, using the limited information we have, we're going to try soup and see if in the end it's good soup. But before we get into any of that, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Standart Magazine. If you're into coffee, its culture and learning about the world around it, Standart Magazine is the perfect addition to your brew bar or coffee table. With quarterly releases, they shed light on issues both inside and outside of the cafe, highlighting people who elevate the industry, and deep dives into new ideas around all things coffee. To sweeten the deal, each issue also includes a sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters, to give you the full sensory experience. You really can't beat the combination of fresh coffee and fresh print. So head on over to standartmag.com slash Prometheus, use the link in the description or codes Prometheus at checkout to snag $5 off your very own subscription of Coffee and Culture, shipped direct to your door nearly anywhere in the world with a money back guarantee. And if you're still on the fence, you can actually try Standart today for just the cost of shipping. There's not a whole lot to lose and a whole lot to gain. All right, so first things first, we're going to set up the decent to run this kind of basic suit profile. And yes, you can use a standard espresso machine for this, as long as you can set the pump pressure down low enough. But with the Decent, it's as simple as just making some minor adjustments to the already preloaded Turbo Turbo profile, by essentially setting the max pressure at each shot phase to at most two bars, and then reeling in the flow rate since at two bars, many profiling machines wouldn't be at their max water debit. But this will vary from machine to machine, so it's worth measuring on your own. Now, with the profile done and out of the way, let's cover the grind and dose. And as you may already know, when it comes to any form of pressurized brewing, a little change can go a long way. For example, a turbo shot isn't all that far from a traditional espresso, so in the case of soup, I'm just going to add another full notch and use a fairly standard dose of 18 grams. From there, everything in terms of puck preparation is the same as usual. Distribute and tamp, and then it's go time. Well, as you maybe expect, the shots themselves aren't those beautiful syrupy extractions that you often associate with espresso, but as we mentioned earlier, the proof is in the cup. Though when you're watching shots like this that really look more like a mud fire hose than an espresso, it can be difficult to anticipate something delicious. But after a handful of dial-in shots, I was able to hit the right numbers with a 15 second shot time, landing at roughly a 1 to 3 ratio. But in terms of flavor, it's not great. I can taste the coffee's overall broad flavor notes, but there's no real balance to speak of. Though it is a little on the juicier side in terms of mouthfeel, but the finish is where it really drops off, leaving a pretty distinct sourness and astringency. And testing for extraction percentage throughout my tests, None of them hit anywhere near the minimum 18%. Which I've said before and I'll say again, the extraction percentage isn't the end all be all of coffee, but I think three or four more percent would really make a difference in reducing that really prevalent sourness that's in the finish. So in an effort to bolster or increase the extraction, I went back into the profile and kicked up the temperatures throughout the duration of the shot, as well as ground slightly finer to increase the surface area. Now, as you can see, this shot ran basically just as chaotic as the others, but in terms of taste, this one was better, though not significantly. The sweetness was much more pronounced up front, and there was more body and balance to it, 
but again, it really just falls off in the finish with a considerable amount of sourness. Now, when it comes to testing that one, it did bump up a bit, but not enough to really get rid of those more negative aspects in the aftertaste, which I think are basically connected to the overall low extraction percentage and the wide brew ratio itself. Espresso is a unique topic to cover because on one side, it's very much a personal preferential based thing, but on the other side, as someone who's sharing my opinions and thoughts on coffee stuff, the soup shop puts me in a very unique predicament. One I really haven't been in since I tried the staccato shot some time ago. I mean, I always want to inspire people to try new things, but in the end with the soup shot, I really couldn't find a silver lining. And I think the big question here is why? Because as I mentioned earlier, I am a big fan of the turbo shot and fundamentally they're very similar, but there are two big differences here grind and pressure. The finer grind on the turbo shot does a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to producing a higher extraction yield, and in my opinion, a better shot overall, with much more balance, sweetness, and of course, a more classic espresso mouthfeel due to the crema production from, you guessed it, higher pressures. But when it comes to the soup shot, because you're grinding significantly coarser, or at least somewhat coarser, you're doing two things. You're for one, reducing your ability to hold back any of that pressure to produce any crema, but also you're reducing your overall surface area, which again is a big factor in reducing or lowering your extraction yield percentage. And even though I don't think that a higher percentage always equals a better coffee, but it is one of those factors that seem to carry through all of the shots I tested and was likely manifested in the cup as a relatively hollow flavor, followed by a pretty distinct sourness that I often associate with under extraction. And really, from my perspective, I don't see why I go with a soup shot versus something tried and true, like a classic Lungo, an Alange, or even a longer ratio turbo shot. And on that note, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up, and as always, pass the conversation on to you. So, what are your thoughts on espresso soup? Have you tried it? And if so, what's your experience been like? Has it been positive or negative? And do you even consider one to two bars to fall into the espresso category? And lastly, are there any other weird, unique espresso shot styles floating around out there that you want me to give a try? Let me know your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Spromethius, for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for early content access. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.